Neither the HoloNet, based on light speed transmission simultaneously via the entire networked grid of hyperspace beacons in use from 25,000 BBY on, nor subspace homing beacons, also capable of light speed broadcasting of pulse transmissions of data but only used over shorter distances, could catch up with a ship traveling at faster than light speeds through hyperspace. As one would look out from inside a ship as it is entering hyperspace, one would see the very stars themselves appear to begin to bend around the craft as it almost instantly accelerates past light speed. The first stage of entering hyperspace comes with accelerating the ship toward light speed. This could not be accomplished without proper development of relativistic shield technology, which keeps the ship intact during such a sudden jump in velocity, as well as inertial dampener technology, which buffers the gravitational pushes and pulls from outside the ship on a passenger inside. If a starship has faulty relativistic shielding, time dilation effects become variable, and time travel incidents have been known to occur, having been caused by this effect. If a ship has faulty inertial dampers, it could be crushed in its own gravity well as it makes the jump to light speed. The second phase of hyperspace travel is trans-light speed travel or the passage of light speed and entering into hyperspace as such. As this occurs, which it does much faster for starships the greater the thrust of their booster engines, any passenger on board a hyperspace traveling starship would see the elongated light lines of stellar gravity wells begin to assume the usual blue shift tint of hyperspace. This occurs due to the craft's velocity repelling it away from all these gravity well light sources at a speed faster than the light itself reaching the ship from these various stellar sources. As the ship passes the speed of light, the lines of starlight begin to blur into a swirling misty tunnel of blue light. Hyperspace itself is a massless, anti-gravity dimension parallel to real space that permeates between its smallest particles and extends beyond outside their fastest limits. It is an almost perfectly vacuum state void of raw ethereal energy and the only particles with any relativistic mass there thus rendering them in hyperspace the equivalent of matter the size of space dust in real space, are tachyons, which are dispersed by the relativistic shield in a cascade of neutrino chronal radiation when the ship drops out of warp. Hyperspace is, besides mass shadows of real space gravity wells, causing the apparent blue tint, and tachyonic dust particles, the swirling mistiness, only an apparently illimitable field of purely clear light, the so-called tunnel vision effect described by sufferers from hyperrapture caused from prolonged staring into it. Aside from the relativistic shielding and inertial dampers used mainly in keeping the passengers comfortable while the ship carrying them is accelerating up to or decelerating down from the thrust of the fastest cosmic particles, once one is past the speed of light, other component systems of the hyperdrive engine become the more important factors for maintaining the cabin's environmental control. A ship traveling through hyperspace still uses its inertial dampers, sublight engines, and relativistic deflector shields to maintain interior gravity during relativistic pseudo-motion occurring along a differential between the temporal motion inside the ship and the faster-than-light hyperspace speeds outside of it. Because hyperspace is an illimitable field of pure energy, devoid of all matter, 
it produces zero drag or force of resistance against a craft traveling through it. Once again, one has to use their ship's other systems in conjunction with the navicomputer and main hyperdrive engine to traverse this dimension unscathed. To slow one ship down from superluminal speeds, one uses the ship's reverse stabilizers to reverse the thrust from the forward sublight boosters while simultaneously cutting the sublight engine. The effect of slowing the ship down while simultaneously dropping out of hyperspace superluminal velocity, combined with the relativistic shields and inertial dampers, allows the ship to speed up or slow down within and around hyperspatial speeds with minimal cabin environment distortion occurring. As one starship decelerates across the threshold of vacuum pressure photons maximum velocity, the tachyon particles that amass across the forward relativistic deflector shields are dispersed in a matter-antimatter annihilation cascade as uncharged, massless neutrinos in a bright white explosion of Cronow spectral light. This event occurs at the exact instant as the ship snaps into position in real space. However, from within the cockpit, this compressed event lasting only an instant in real space is time dilated into the reappearance of elongated starlight lines. If a ship loses mass while in hyperspace, such as by ejecting an escape pod, or has an increased drag on its sublight thrust while traveling through hyperspace, such as has happened due to faulty relativistic shielding or a leaking hyperdrive motivator, then the ship is liable to arrive at its destination at a different time than originally programmed into and computed by the NAVA computer. The result of this is time dilation occurring for the passenger, such that they arrive at their destination, only oftentimes much later than they intended to, sometimes arriving thousands of years in what would have been their own timeline's future. Assuming one's relativistic shields hold out and no temporal distortion effects occur, one still faces the nearly impossible task of navigating not only the gravity wells of real space's mass shadows in hyperspace, but also the vector of approach between the point one begins dropping out of hyperspace and when the ship comes to a total halt. During the last moments of hyperspace travel, a starship will still be decelerating through velocities that cause other forms of relativistic effects than time dilation or the discharge of Cronow light when exiting hyperspace. At these near-luminal speeds, there remains the definite danger of an extremely minute miscalculation by the NAVA computer, resulting in a slight target overshoot and the ship crashing into a star at sublight speeds instead of simply entering its planetary system's space.